Here's how to pass the AZ400 exam and become a certified DevOps engineer. In this video, we're going to talk about how to approach this, how to prepare for the exam, the topics that you need to learn in order to pass the exam, and also my strategy when it comes to taking these certification exams and what I learned from taking them. The first thing that you need to do is to take a practice test. See what you know and what you don't know. Because even if you're a complete beginner, this is going to help you to get a better sense of the topics that you're going to be tested for. And Microsoft Learn offers free practice tests and at getthatbadge.com we offer exam ready practice tests as well. Now, based on the questions that you don't know, then you can just go ahead and check the documentation that covers those specific things. And in each practice question, you're going to get explanations and you're also going to get links to the learning materials. So you're going to end up with a subset of topics that you need to dive deep into. And for each question that you fail, right, you can just open the links to the docs in a separate tab. And after you finish the test, you're going to end up with about 10 to 15 tabs. And then you can just spend half an hour going through those tabs and just learn all of those subjects. And if you do this, right, then you're going to get a feel for how much you actually need to prepare. And then you can just rinse and repeat as many times as needed to get as close as you can to that 100% passing rate. And it's okay if you fail, right, because this is just a practice test and failing or even passing with the low score, right, it's still going to motivate you to actually learn. The AZ400 exam focuses on designing and implementing Microsoft DevOps solutions. And it's actually in the name. So when we talk about DevOps solutions, the majority of the work will be around infrastructure solutions. As a DevOps engineer, you're going to need to deliver solutions for continuous security, for integration, for testing, delivery, deployment, monitoring and feedback, right? So managing and being an infrastructure admin takes into account covering a lot of areas. And luckily this type of work is quite in demand nowadays because a lot more and more companies, they need people to set up and manage their new projects. I personally think this is one of the best times for you to get this AZ400 certification. And the reason for that is that companies need more and more, you know, of this infrastructure admin work. They need more and more people to work on this type of solutions compared to some years ago. So if you're looking to level up your position or if you want to get a better salary as a DevOps engineer, this is the best way to do it. A certification alone, of course, doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a job, but this actually signals, right, that you're aware of the Azure stack that you're going to be working with. And hiring managers nowadays, they, they need people that are already trained in that specific area. There's no more training on the job. They just need people to get up and running with the new stack that they actually need, you know, so they just need people to get on with it. So let's see how this certification can actually help you. What does this certification test for? And what are the topics that you need to be prepared for? The certification path as of today, right? It contains an introduction and it has multiple learning paths. And these are crucial because they cover essential skills and practices for DevOps engineers. Things such as implementing source control with GitHub and Azure repos, designing and implementing build and release pipelines with Azure pipelines and GitHub actions, and also developing security and compliance plans. They also cover how to manage Azure resources using the Azure CLI, as well as resource manager templates. And these modules are great introductions, but you might think that there's a lot to learn when preparing for this AZ400 exam. And you're right, right? Because there's a lot to cover. And at getthatbash.com, we offer over 325 exam-ready questions that cover all of the learning path materials. We have questions literally from all of the sections, right, in the study materials. So there's nothing left to uncover when you go through these questions. You're going to be certain that you covered all of the learning material. Now let's go through all of the topics that you need to learn about so that you can pass the Azure DevOps Engineer exam, Azure Services and Infrastructure Management. You got to learn how to manage Azure VMs, how to deploy extensions and how to configure permissions for agents such as the Log Analytics agent. You got to learn how to generate email alerts for scaling actions in Azure VM scale sets and whether configuring auto scale settings or creating action groups in Azure Monitor can actually achieve this. You also need to be able to recommend solutions for implementing health checks of web apps that identify whether instances of an Azure VM scale set are eligible for upgrade operations and you also need to minimize admin effort for that. Also for this section you need to be familiar with agents that need to be deployed in order to collect data about processes that are running in the guest operating systems of Azure VMs. Next, networking and security. For networking and security, you need to learn Azure networking concepts, how to restrict access to environments using Azure AD, and how to implement network security measures to limit access to company on-prem devices. Also, you have to know how to configure Azure AD to enforce multi-factor authentication for accessing apps from untrusted networks. 
Azure Security Center is super important for security recommendations regarding Azure Web Apps and Azure Functions. You gotta learn how to use Azure Key Vault as well to provide secrets to applications and how to understand how to assign secret permissions following the principle of least privilege. Also, you need to be able to assess the security of Azure Web Apps and functions as well, you know, by providing features that provide security recommendations. And when it comes to single sign-on, you have to know the URIs that are required for SAML configuration in Azure AD so that you can enable SSO for users in a GitHub organization, for example. And you also need to understand how to use Azure Resource Manager templates to deploy applications while preventing users from viewing sensitive information, like for example, credentials and connection strings. And learn how to configure access levels for different user roles, such as developers, right? And last for security, you also need to understand the steps that are needed to configure GitHub to use Azure AD for authentication. Again, all of these topics are covered in our practice exams at getthatbatch.com, so you don't need to remember all of them. You're going to get these questions in the practice test. The first thing that you need to do when taking practice tests, right, is to make sure that you read the questions properly and that you take your time to think about it if it's not really obvious. Because listen, nobody's rushing you and you have enough time. So train yourself to have patience because this is going to matter a lot in the exam. And the second and the most important thing that you need to do when taking practice tests is to go through the explanations for the correct answers. Because most of the time, they're going to tell you everything that you need to know. But I recommend that you dive deeper and check out the links at the bottom, right? Because they're going to complete your understanding. So this is the main trick to feel confident, you know, that you went through everything. The more questions that you check, the more explanations that you see, the more pages in the documentation that you read, the higher the chances of success will be. And speaking of success, I'm really happy to see people writing down in the comments that these videos help them pass the exam. I truly think that all of these exams are made for people to pass. And as long as you know what you need to learn, and you actually learn these things, then passing is going to be guaranteed. The next topics that you need to learn in order to pass the AZ400 exam and actually become an Azure certified DevOps engineer are around version control and repository management. You have to know how to work with various version control systems that integrate with Azure DevOps. You need to understand how to manage repos, including cloning repositories from GitHub to Azure DevOps. And you also need to learn how to minimize, for example, the data size of a Git repo for a large enterprise application. Also, you need to understand which version control solutions are suitable for developers that want to work offline frequently or who just need access to the full project history. Next, learn about branching strategies and agile development. For branching strategies, an example is Gitflow. For example, how does it support agile development practices, parallel independent tasks, and code experimentation? Learn about different merge strategies, such as squashing commits, and also how to use them in branch policies to manage source code in protected branches. Also, you have to be able to analyze risk graphs using the dependency tracker extension. And the last for version control is to learn about pull request strategies in Azure DevOps. You have to be able to implement pull request strategies that use specific merge techniques, such as the three-way merges, for example. Next, CI-CD and automation. For CI-CD and automation, you need to be able to understand the principles of CI-CD and also how implementing these principles can help with preventing configuration drifting projects. Also know how to configure pipeline variables for detailed logging in CI-CD pipelines, which is actually for the same goal to prevent configuration drift over time. You need to learn how to configure Azure pipelines to make sure that new releases meet baseline performance conditions before deploying to production. And also you need to know how to add automated processes to build pipelines to detect when common open source libraries are added to the code base. Another big part is to be familiar with infrastructure as code. You gotta learn about best practices and you gotta get a good understanding of frameworks like Terraform that actually help with deploying Azure resources. Next, understand the use of Azure automation and the DSC feature, including different configuration modes like apply only, apply and monitor, and apply and autocorrect. And speaking of automation, you gotta understand which frameworks to use for automating UI testing for web applications. And for technical debt management, you need to understand the concept of technical debt and whether recommendations like increasing code duplication or reducing code complexity meet the goal of reducing technical debt. And more than that, you gotta be able to recommend metrics to assess the amount of technical debt. Next, monitoring and logging. For monitoring and logging, first you need to learn how to use Azure Event Hubs 
Azure Monitor and Application Insights. For Application Insights, you have to know how to use it in order to monitor the health and performance of Azure web apps and also how to set up alerts for performance issues and failures. Also, you have to learn how to use Azure Log Analytics solutions and how to generate tickets in ServiceNow based on application failures or authentication issues. Another important thing to learn is how to configure alert rules in Azure Monitor in order to trigger alerts based on specific conditions such as, for example, CPU usage thresholds. And for Azure SQL databases, how do you generate alerts based on metrics such as the number of connections? On notifications, you also have to know, for example, what factors might prevent smart detection notifications from being sent for a web app on a shared service plan tier. And again about alerts, right? You have to know how to send SMS alerts for scheduled maintenance of Azure services and also what actions need to be performed to set up those alerts. For web app monitoring, you also have to know how to recommend solutions to detect abnormal rises in the rate of failed requests to a web app. And still on web apps, right? How do you manage logging levels based on usage patterns? And the final thing to mention when it comes to monitoring is how do you receive notifications in Microsoft Teams for Azure Monitor Alerts and which actions do you need to perform in order to set up this integration? And there's another topic that you also need to cover and that's query languages, processes and tools. And one of the most important things that you need to study about are different query languages and learn how you can apply these languages to analyze data from Azure SQL Database and Azure Application Insights. And you have to be good at writing queries for monitoring data using these query languages. On work item processes, right, you have to be able to select and configure them in Azure DevOps in order to allow for tracking of requirements, change requests, risks, and reviews. Also, you need to understand how to use widgets in Azure boards to track metrics like the time taken to close work items. And on communication tools, learn about the tools that support dev teams in different locations and how you can integrate these tools directly with Azure DevOps. And I know this is a lot, but if you cover all of the things that we talked about in this video, I believe that you're going to feel a lot more confident and the chances are that you have no stress when you're going to take this exam. So when it comes to preparing for this exam, for me, I like to take practice tests constantly and check the answers and the explanations at the end. This way you can just go directly to the sections that you need to learn about rather than just getting lost in the documentation. What I learned from taking these exams is that you need to optimize for time. First, go through all of the questions that you're 100% sure of. And for the questions that you're not 100% sure of, then you can just select the answer that you think is most likely to be correct. And then you can just mark that for review so that you can double check it at the end. You have to go through all of the questions carefully. You don't have to spend more than like one minute on each. Provide an answer and then mark them for review if you're not 100% sure. And this way you're going to have enough time at the end to actually go through them again. You're going to have a case study at the beginning of the exam. So you're going to have a set of questions around it. And it's going to be around six to eight questions. And the challenge here is that you need to complete all of the case study questions before you can move on to the rest of the questions. So your exam will actually have two parts, right? It's going to have two parts with their own review sections and you shouldn't spend more than like 20 minutes on the case study itself. So the best thing to do is to pay attention to the case study. You have to read it properly so that you don't miss anything and do your best to answer the questions based on your own knowledge and your common sense. And another important thing to talk about when it comes to the Azure DevOps engineer exam is the open book feature. Because Open Book allows you to use the Microsoft Learn website during this certification exam. And you might think, oh, okay, that's wonderful, right? I just don't have to study. I can just prepare to search for the answers to all of these questions, right? I just have to know what to search for and I don't have to study at all. But listen, you would be definitely wrong because in practice, the Open Book feature is a huge time sink. Because from my personal experience, right, you're going to find the answer for about 30 to 50% of the questions that you're checking. But that comes at a huge time cost because you burn a lot of time refining your searches until you get that answer. So if you use it a lot, you might run out of time. And that's the last thing that you want. So here's my advice on the open book feature. Only use it at the end when you check the questions that you marked for review. And not for all of the questions. Only for the questions where you can have clear search terms, like one word or a two word search. Because if you have like a three word search or even more, you know, as a search phrase, then your chances of finding an answer aren't that great. That's kind of it for the Azure AZ400 exam. If you go through the topics that we talked about in this video, if you take the Microsoft Learn practice test, you can even supplement your learning with practice exams from getthatbadge.com. And that way you can actually support this channel as well. And you can also do something productive. If you do all of these things, and if you maintain a good pace when you're taking this exam, I'm literally 100% sure that you're going to pass it. 
Listen, good luck when you're taking it. Let me know down in the comments if this video helped. Also like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.